Hello students, welcome to an academy, India's largest learning platform. I am Abhishek Datta. I did my graduation from IIT Roorkee and my MBA from IIM Indore. So in the previous video, we had started off with the topic of the developments which led on to Niels Bohr to develop his own model. And that was part one of the video. In this video, we'll explore the next part which is part two and we'll see the particle nature of the light. So let's begin this video. Hello students, welcome to an academy once again. So this video is about the developments leading to the Bohr's model, right? We had discussed the part one in the previous section. In this video, we'll start off with the part two. I'm Abhishek Datta. You already know about me. So let's begin this. We'll be taking up two topics for our discussion today. In the previous video, we had already discussed the wave nature of electromagnetic radiation. So in this section, we'll discuss firstly the particle nature of the electromagnetic radiation. And when we know both the particle nature as well as the wave nature, then we'll study about the dual nature of electromagnetic radiation. Okay. So let's quickly begin our first topic, which is the particle nature of electromagnetic radiation. Now let's start this discussion with the Planck's quantum theory. Now Max Planck was a scientist who carried out a few experiments and led on, which led on to the development of this theory over here. So Max Planck, he suggested that atoms and molecules could emit or absorb energy only in the discrete quantities. So there are atoms and molecules and they could absorb or they could also emit energy, right? But this could also happen. This could only happen in discrete quantities, not continuous quantities, only in discrete quantities, right? So continuous manner was the fashion which was very well known up till that point. But according to Max Planck, he carried out a few experiments and he said this continuous manner, this is a wrong thing. Uh, the energy could be absorbed or it could be emitted by an atom or molecule only in discrete quantities and not continuous quantities, right? And Max Planck gave the name quantum to the smallest quantity of energy that can be emitted or absorbed in the form of electromagnetic radiation. So quantum is the name which he gave to the smallest unit of energy, right? Now he developed a new equation over here. What is this equation? Let us see. So this gives us the energy of a quantum of radiation. So if you take one quantum of radiation, what is the energy possessed by that quantum of radiation? That is proportional to the frequency, right? So energy, which is denoted by E, that is equal to H into the frequency mu over here. So H is a constant irrespective of where you are, which particle you are working on. H is a universal constant, right? So what is the value of H? It is known by the name Planck's constant H, right? Because of the uh, scientist name Max Planck. Hence it is known by the name Max Planck's constant. And the value is 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. Note students that the uh, unit of Planck's constant is joule second. Because if you multiply this Planck's constant with the frequency whose unit is second raised to the power minus one, we finally arrive at the uh, SI unit of energy, which is joules over here. So that is why Planck's constant has the units joules into seconds. And it has the value of 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34. So from here, we can learn that the energy of a quantum, it depends on the frequency and nothing else, right? So if you have the frequency or if you have the wavelength, you can find out the energy which is possessed by that quantum, right guys? So let's move on. So this is another set of experiment which led on to the development of particle nature over here, right? So this experiment is known by the name photoelectric effect. So what happened is guys, in 1887, Mr. Hertz, who is again a very good uh, scientist, right? So he performed an experiment in which electrons or electric current were ejected when certain metals were exposed to a beam of light. Now this is the apparatus which Mr. Hertz used over here. So this is the metal, right? Metal surface which he used and he bombarded that metal surface with light beams. So light beams, these are external light beams which he projected on the metal surface and he could observe that there were some sort of electrons which were flowing out of the metal surface because of the incidence of initial external light, right guys? So electrons or electric current were ejected when certain metals were exposed to the beam of light. So this electron, this phenomena is known as the photoelectric effect, right? So this electron is known by the name photoelectrons. We'll move on to this part now. So light of a particular frequency 
strikes a clean metal surface inside a vacuum chamber. This has to be a vacuum chamber and this electron it ejects out and there is an ammeter connected to the circuit so that this measures the current, right? So light of a particular frequency strikes a clear metal surface inside the vacuum chamber and electrons are ejected from the metal and are counted by this detector. There can be any sort of detector. For example, an ammeter can be used to measure the current, amount of current which is flowing through this circuit. So finally, what we learn is, what is photoelectric effect guys? So the phenomena of ejection of electrons from the surface of metal when light of suitable frequency strikes is called photoelectric effect. And these ejected electrons guys, they are known by the name photoelectrons. So this was the photoelectric effect. Now let us look at some observations from this same photoelectric effect. What are the observations which uh, the experimenter had, right? So he said, when beam of light falls on a metal surface, when this beam of light falls on the metal surface, electrons are ejected immediately. If this light is having enough energy, then this electron will be ejected instantaneously. There won't be any lag. Next he said, number of electrons ejected is proportional to the intensity of the brightness of the light, right? So if we increase the brightness of this light, then the number of electrons that will keep on increasing. So here intensity is proportional to the number of electrons. Keep that in mind guys. This is an important statement. Then he defined a threshold frequency guys. So he observed that for each metal, there is a characteristic minimum frequency. By frequency, I mean the frequency of the initial light, external light. So there is a minimum characteristic frequency below which the photoelectric effect is not observed. This is called the threshold frequency. So there is a minimum frequency which this light needs to have for the photoelectric effect to carry on. If you are below that frequency, no matter how long you flash this light on the metal surface, there won't be any electrons ejected. There won't be any photoelectric effect. So this minimum frequency is known by the name threshold frequency guys. And if the frequency of the incident light that is denoted by mu and frequent uh, threshold frequency is denoted by mu naught. Okay guys. So if mu is less than mu naught, which means there will be no photoelectric effect, right? So there is no ejection of the electrons, no matter how long it falls on the surface or how high its intensity is. So the basic minimum criteria is that the incident light, it should have a frequency mu naught which is greater mu which is greater than mu naught guys and mu naught is the threshold frequency guys so let's move on now now how could this be explained there have been many scientists who tried but einstein was the first experiment uh, uh, the scientist who explained this photoelectric effect right so what is the uh, uh, concept of this photoelectric effect what is happening now so he said einstein said when a photon of sufficient energy it strikes an electron in the atom of a metal. So by photon, I mean the light. So light is consisting of photons. And when this light with sufficient energy, it strikes the electron in the form electron in the atom of the metal, it transfer transfers its energy instantaneously to the electron during the collision. And the electron is ejected with it without any time lag or delay. As we saw according to the first observation that there was no lag between the ejection and the incidence of the external light source, right? And greater the energy possessed by the photon, which means that the initial light is having more and more intensity, then greater will be the transfer of energy to the electron and greater the kinetic energy of the ejected electron. Now, when the electron is ejected, it must have some velocity, right? It is coming out with some velocity and hence it must have some kinetic energy associated with it as well. So, uh, Einstein said from the conservation of energy principle, he said if we take the energy imparted by light on the left side, it is equal to the energy taken by the electron, right guys, according to the conservation of energy. And what is the energy taken by the electron? It is nothing but the threshold energy, the energy which it needs to come out of the atom plus the kinetic energy because the uh, electron is having some mass and having some velocity, hence it will also have some kinetic energy. So the energy impacted by the external source of light, it is converted into these two forms of energy. And he gave us a mathematical formula, which is known by this formula, right? So what is the energy imparted by the light? It is nothing but E equals to H mu, right? We studied that in the previous section. So H into mu and mu is the frequency of the impacted light, right? And that is equal to the threshold energy H into mu naught plus the kinetic energy 
where m is the mass of the electron and v over here it is the velocity of the ejected electron now as a special note guys what is this term called this is the minimum energy required for the electron to come out right which is the threshold energy so minimum threshold energy it is also known by the name work function so do not get confused if this word comes into your exam work function is same as the threshold energy guys which is h mu naught right so as, as, as a special note again uh, again i am saying a more intense beam of light will eject more electrons right so intensity is proportional to the number of electrons guys okay and frequency over here this frequency is proportional to the velocity which you observe because this is a minimum threshold energy it is constant and irrespective of how much mu you use over here this mu naught will be constant for an atom right guys and if you increase this mu only this v will increase so kinetic energy depends on the initial uh, frequency right so let's move on guys now we are done with both the nature of the electromagnetic radiation in the previous video and in this video we have come across both the uh, particles that is the particle nature and the uh, wave nature of the electromagnetic radiation guys so now we concise both of them together and we arrive at the dual nature of electromagnetic radiation now what's happen is the particle behavior of light could explain the black body radiation electro effect uh, electro elect, photoelectric effect satisfactorily but on the other hand it was not consistent with the known wave behavior of light which could account for the phenomena of the interference and diffraction right guys so particle behavior of light is being observed in some cases and in other cases we see the wave behavior of light so that is why we can say the electromagnetic radiation it has dual properties both the particle behavior as well as the wave behavior this could be explained only by the fact that light possesses both the particle and the wave like properties hence we can safely say that light has dual behavior right guys and whenever radiation interacts with matter it displays particle like properties so whenever there is interaction with matter it shows particle like properties but on the other hand whenever there is interference or diffraction these sort of cases where it propagates then it shows wave like properties so whenever there is interaction with matter it shows particle behavior and whenever it propagates it shows wave behavior that is why there is dual nature of electromagnetic radiation guys so we have reached at the end of the video let's summarize quickly what all we learned we said about max planck's experiment and planck's quantum theory and he suggested that atoms and molecules could em emit energy or they could absorb energy only in discrete quantities guys and not in continuous manner and he quantified this energy energy is equal to h into mu h is the planck's constant and mu is the frequency over here then we studied about the definition of photoelectric effect right and the ejected electrons are known by the name photoelectrons we also studied about einstein's explanation of this photoelectric effect and this equation which he gave h mu is equal to h mu naught plus kinetic energy that is half mv square we also said the intensity is proportional to the number of electrons right and we also said whenever radiation interacts with matter it displays particle like properties and whenever it propagates it shows wave like properties hence electromagnetic radiations they consist of dual nature both the particle as well as the wave nature so with this we reach at the end of the video guys thank you for listening to me in the next section we'll be talking about more developments another development is the uh, observation of atomic spectra which matter showcase to us okay guys and if you love watching my videos you can follow me over here and ask me any doubts if you have in the comment section thank you guys take care bye bye